Well, right now, we well, the new review of the latest Tame Impala record. Oh shit! Current. It's a great song. That I just peaked the microphone. I better peaked the shout that microphone just then. Great song, is it? Currents. Album. It's not a song. Did I say it's song? You said yeah. Song. Well, it's a great fucking album. <laughs> I don't think so. Impala, and that was the review. <laughs> <laughs> Great album. Next song. Can confirm. <laughs> Next song. <laughs> Tame Impala is an Australian psychedelic Are kind of rock. I they were yeah, I always yeah, they're Australian. Wow. I totally thought so. We, we told everyone at Bestival that they were British. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, we told Australian. Remy they were British as well. Remy doesn't even care though. That's, That's a good point. Carry on. Remy thinks I'm recycling. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, no one was going to get that. No one's so. going to get that. <laughs> the Australian psychedelic cut, rock pop cut. band founded by Kevin Parker in 2007. This is their third full length album. James! Sorry Stop to interrupt. Look at my notes. Sorry to interrupt. You're not allowed to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you were interrupting. <laughs> but I would like to interrupt. Uh, Tame Impala technically isn't a band per se. It's actually the solo Just project Kevin, of Kevin's Kevin thing? with oh, his live backing band, who are the same throughout. Because I'm pretty sure he recorded so he like everything. Shit. Yeah, I heard like he drums and did all like the bass shit. Mm. Yeah, that is an instrument. <laughs> <as well. laughs> but I was like reading some review, and it was like saying, like. He was like, getting really good at writing bass lines and stuff, and I was like watching him live. I was like, it's not even playing bass. Quite a few people have started. That started to become a thing again. I think. Like you know how old school it would be. Like you know you'd have the famous people like Elvis Presley or whatever, and he had a band, but it wouldn't be him and Bob, you know Bob Marley and stuff. That sort of started to become a thing. Then there's a lot of acts that I've seen recently who have been like Tomston, the one I saw at Festival. That that's just a dude, and he mm. has a band that he yeah. tours with, but it's so, just a dude who writes it all. So is Kevin Parker a frontman? Oh, I see. Is he a frontman? Well, a lot of people wanted to say that a frontman was someone that didn't play an instrument and they literally were just the frontman and that was it. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. That's why definition. someone was like, oh, well, Bruce Springsteen doesn't count because he's like playing guitar while he's doing it. And that's. Yeah, that Bruce count. Springsteen's like. But he's still the front, front of the band. Exactly. I disagree. I think the front of the band. Yes, he, yeah, he's the front man. He's the front man. I'm actually the front of the band. <laughs> Get a load of the ass, by the <laughs> The drummer is the ass. Okay. Just so you know. Fuck you, Tim Jones. James! He's also Australian. <laughs> Who? The drummer. Oh, good. Thank God I got my intro right then when I said an Australian. But James. Yes. You've been a big fan of Tate Park for a long time. I wouldn't say that. No? Nah, yeah, I would. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I totally thought you were... Like, I wouldn't what? say that, because it would be weird to say that about myself. Well, to find long time, like, I... Were you listening back in the inner speaker days? No, I wasn't. <sighs> then everything you have to say on this entire review from now on is invalid. Null and void. Hack off. I started listening when Lonerism was released. I was introduced by a friend in college. Okay, okay. Because I was going to say, I, I only got into them, like, a year... Just over a year ago, I think, when someone, like, I kept on, it was one of those things where I kept on hearing, like, too many good things about it, not mm. to go and listen to it, because mm. I'm still, like, pretty reluctant to do things. I need, I need at least three people to talk to that <laughs> randomly and say, yeah. yeah, that's a great fucking, like, thing. When like, I heard about them. Movies, like, everything. I heard about them in the context of, like, they're very popular. A lot of people I knew who weren't that into music had mentioned them. I'd seen them on like charts and stuff, their name there. And so I sort of automatically assumed they'd probably be shit. I, they're and nothing I like what I expected. That in my mind for a while. Exactly, they're nothing like what I expected as well. And then I, I like was like, I should give this tame part a listen. When I was just listening through the charts one day to see what it was, and I was like, it is, it's really nice. I don't, it's, yeah. like, it's like psychedelic rock mm. that kind of sounds, lonerism in particular, it sounds a lot like the fucking Beatles. I'm sorry, but his voice sounds like so John Lennon-y on some of the tracks, and especially Elephant. Like, that could just be John Lennon. And it sounds plug, good. I'm going to plug Alberito Bar. What? Well, right because. in the middle of there. Where does that come from? <laughs> because the owner, I was talking to him, and he said specifically for the reason that, Tame, uh, that Kevin Parker sounds 
like John Lennon, he doesn't like them and won't listen to them. Really? Sorry. Yeah. So our fucking like cameraman behind here, Isaac, is just like nodding his head because <laughs> before we even started today's show, he Al was Burrito. like, I'm going to fucking get Al Burrito, like tonight. Like, it's not Tuesday. I know, but... Wait, hmm. you're getting it tonight? Let's We've completely gone off record. Let's make plans <laughs> off camera, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Basically, we're going to eat some fucking Mexican food tonight in Al Burrito. Then we're going to go for some beers. Who's bar? Or house bar. Have you I thought we say? weren't. I, did, I thought we didn't have sponsors. Let's None of keep you told us we had sponsors. <laughs> places around here. I don't know anymore. Back, back to the show. What, what are we even doing? Is it a show? Here? We're talking about the album Currents by Tame and Parla, released 2015. Mm. The song Currents, you mean? Yes. So I hadn't really got into their much because I'd only listened to a few of their songs that were on the charity. But I was like, they're one of those bands that I'm going to get into eventually. But I'm a busy man. <laughs> I have a lot of nothing to do. No. So I didn't get really get into them until after Bestival, really, when I like went and saw them live. But that was like, like a few so weeks ago. Live. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like this is like the first album of theirs I've given a proper listen. Oh, to. so you haven't listened to Lonerism? Because I was going to say like I've listened, listened to, I've listened to songs from it. I I would I recognise songs from it, but I haven't like sat down and listened to the whole album. I don't, wouldn't know like the back catalogs or stuff. Because I think there's going to be like some disputes today, like over who thinks what's the better album, like Lonerism. <laughs> Well, I can't currents. be involved in that conversation. I think you should be allowed. <laughs> okay, okay. Specifically. Yes. Specifically. specifically. What, are you gonna, what specifically are you going to talk about? I was totally waiting for you to say something. And then for me to be like... Specifically, the camera. let it happen. What is your opinion? I really fucking loved it. Like, a lot. Like, it's my favourite rape anthem of the year <laughs> uh, yeah, just the, let it happen yeah uh, dude let it happen. do you know what though fucking Rick and Morty right there just let it happen <laughs> as, as as much as we make fun of that song for it's name like it is it's a really fun it's fucking song. awesome it's, it's one of it's great it's one when of I fucking love how it progresses when, when I first listened to it yeah the bit in the middle where it's kind of that whole record skipping oh yeah, yeah. I didn't the first like time I listened to that I was like yeah I still don't love that bit it's not smooth and smooth enough. Mm. But when you listen to it live, doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. That's true. Doesn't matter. It's amazing, mm. regardless. And then when it comes to guitar, like damn, damn, damn. But dan, dan. Yeah. then on top of the skipping, mm. you've got this orchestral synth that comes in. Mm. And at first, it's just playing this whole like melody that's playing. But then he keeps it on one note and he starts to automate the like the volume of the synth mm. so that it kind of like starts pulsing and has its rhythm behind it. And then he's whacking like so many different phases and flanges <laughs> on there and getting the panning going and then he introduces loads of other stuff and it's I, I find incredible. I the filter on the drums. Yeah. Like, I didn't expect it to happen. But I let it happen. But you let it happen. And when I let it happen it worked and they do it live and stuff and I just love the idea of it being done live because it's just microphones everything's coming through the speakers they have a really so good. nice live setup and that is a big song as well that's like nine minutes or yeah something. you watched it but I don't know. that was fucking the awesome. um, vocoder works so well in my oh, opinion oh yeah I can't do a vocoder live okay I'm not a fucking god I know I try and do everything like. did you know that Kevin Parker can't do a vocoder live either. No! <laughs> it was all lies! What? He used an actual vocoder? <laughs> he used an actual vocoder. What a faker. I know, right? God, he can't do it properly. And I apparently when he went into the recording studio, he did just kind of say gibberish. Yeah, but when he says like... gibberish, he doesn't mean that he was just saying words that aren't words. Mm. He was just saying sentences that didn't mean anything in relation to each other. Um, but it sounded amazing! And he kept those words that he uses when he does it live as well and then the guitar at the end the fattest <laughs> most distorted <laughs> guitar which has just got the it's it's incredible it has some really I love the nice, way that little phrase returns and like keeps coming back it's just tasty it's so good I found so this good. album actually really hard to listen to all the way through because I kept having to go back to the beginning for more after only like the first half of the album. <laughs> Although, not gonna lie, first half of the album had all like the best songs. The songs I love the most were all in the first half of the album. Just saying. Just saying for Truvesies. Like, yeah, I, I, think, I think for me it was quite spread out. Really? Yeah, I think it was quite spread out for me. I'd say first three quarters. 
I felt as though this album has one of the worst endings to an album. Yeah. What yeah. Is, this what the this uh, f- you've gone way too Sorry, far. sorry. What are you <laughs> doing, man? <laughs> this for for yeah, me new is the, the one of the one album out of all the albums we've been talking about that does not have a good end song. It doesn't. I feel as though Reality in Motion is like all right. It's not amazing. I like the synths on it, but I didn't. Wait like a much. minute. How does Real? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay, listen, here we go. listen to the last twenty seconds of Reality in Motion. Just skip to the end, and it sounds like he's singing. Almost touched the D, like over and over again. He's saying, I, I was like, almost oh, yeah. touched the D. Yeah, it will sound. It will sound almost about like that. Maybe it will sound a tiny bit like oh, whatever. Skipped it to twenty seconds almost. and immediately. Almost touched the D. Like <laughs> immediately, she straight up. He just says, so "Almost touched the D." Did. Totally it's ridiculous. Did. Like that's that's just and that makes my opinion. It. The fact that I didn't notice this, but as soon as you point it out, I cannot hear anything. But <laughs> yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But that's just that's just our opinion. What do you guys think? Yeah. Like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, I did it again. And can I point at something as well? Like down in the description over there. The description. I don't think the description is over there. It's down here. Up in the description over there. Up down. <laughs> well, they are an Australian. We'll put, we'll put a link to the description oh, okay. there. Yeah. Well, because it spins the other way in Australia, which it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking telling you now. Um, but then, reality in motion, average, kind of all right, average. Love paranoia, average, but just not like. I like the vocals, like the melody he used, but De- I didn't like Definitely this so- this album ended with a sort of a, a sort of slow... And then New walk. Person, Same Old Mistakes, I thought was just awful. I thought, that is a really bad way of ending it. I what fucking loved... I can't remember the name. Yeah. The Moment. The Moment. The Moment. It's one of my favourite songs the on the album. Really the okay, really the whole album's like got this like kind of 80s feel to it. It's got like... Yeah, yeah. I listen to it, I'm like, Kind of wow. like a disco... Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah, it's Psychedelic disco. It's kind of crazy. And I fucking... Like, I was listening to it, I was like, dude, I can imagine playing GTA Vice City and this coming on the radio right now mm. and me just digging it. It's quite like that sort of very 80s sound that's slipping into a lot of stuff. Like Madian has a lot of it in where you can hear like stuff that sounds bit ba- even Port Robinson has a bit of it in where there's a lot of sort of little little eighties things mm. that sort of crop up and make things just sound a bit more sort of funky in that way. And, and just how the entire album's just like soaked in reverb and it's like yeah. and it's so nice. Like usually when it's, that happens it's, it's, it's a pleasure to not a great it's, thing, but it just it's be really work. muddy, yeah. It's the opposite to the Dead Weather album, where that was quite harsh and after a while it could get grating if you weren't getting too into it. This is just like soft on the ears the whole way through. It's like receiving hug. Mm. I just want to an say, electronic hug. About this album, like, the sound is completely different to London Risen. Yes. Like, I feel it's, like, really dark and intense, like, the whole album. Mm. And there comes a point in the album where you realise that it's a breakup album. And it's, like, it all makes sense. Like, um, Loner there's so many, like, high euphoric moments and, like, just happy, everything feels nice. And then he breaks up with her. I remember that. And breaks oh, yeah, her yeah, and says, let it happen. <laughs> that was a piano, by the way. Sorry, I wasn't looking at drums. So hard. Do you also remember how he said to stop hitting the table? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, man. Sorry. <laughs> After the moment, yes, I'm changing. I yes, also I'm thought changing. Was so it was like a freaking ballad. It was <sighs> so beautiful. I, I loved wanted it. to lick it. It was really good. If you could lick reverb. Me, that's all. That's all. If, if you if, if, if you could if you could reverb, if you could, that's an album name right there, isn't it? Or, yes. or a band name. Yes. If you what? could, li- if you that could should lick be reverb. that should be our band. If you could lick reverb, yeah, yeah. terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> this guy. Two out of ten. So, I kind of felt that when I was listening to Yes, I'm Changing, it could have been like a prom dance song. Did you feel that? Um, yes and no, but only from like an '80s film. Yeah. Yeah, but like yeah. I imagine everything was like taking place in like a, a, a high school kind of big yeah. hall thing because of the discoiness. I fucking loved it. It was so dark. And then moving into eventually, was just like up. just like my high school days. Yeah. It's just so fucking dark. Eventually, dark, dark disco. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> eventually, that's a song. Yeah, that's a song. <laughs> eventually, we'll talk about it. Uh, it's number five after yeah. Yes, I'm Changing. Yeah, I thought it was wicked. Yeah. I loved it. It was great. It was a lot slower, um, but it kind of had like a really strong rock intro, which it didn't have. What none of the other songs kind of had. Mm. Well, I'd say "Let It Happen" kind of did, but Let It Happen. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, 
And the less I know, the better. I think oh. we can all agree that that is that incredible. That I would say is the best song on the album. I don't know. Like, the less I know, the better is my favorite. The less I know, the better is the one that I think this album's going to be one of those ones where, like, your favorite song in the album changes quite a bit. Yeah, no, I agree while. with that. I like, agree. I, I could see that, yeah. I think the less I know, the better is going to be is the one that will hit people. Like, I'll be honest, I, I think the less I know, the better, to be honest. Is the best out- song in the album? No, no I just right. think that, that the, the less, less he knows, I know. it is the better. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. It was a joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think they call it humor. Oh, <laughs> don't get it. But yeah, I think there's a lot, there's like a <laughs> section of tracks at the top of this album that are all excellent and like e- either one could be my favorite at any moment. I totally get that. I want to go and listen to this album right now. Yeah. Can we finish this episode already? Should we, should go, we go to Al Brio right and then whoa, eat Brio whoa, whoa. and listen to this? Before this, I just have to mention this one part of the album that I love. All right. Actually, okay, there were two. Go ahead. No, there were three. Let's go. Number one, in past life, there's kind of like a pitch down, not vocoder, but kind of distorted vocals. But it's so Australian. Yeah. Like, I couldn't get over how Australian was. Hey, you were telling there's me a particular too, yeah. part where he says, It was my lover. <laughs> yes. From my past life. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, Whoa! and then this death grips distortion you know comes what? in. And I you're wanted like, to what talk the, about that track. What's going on? Because when I was listening to it first, I wasn't quite into the vocal, the 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 actual processing on it. I thought it was an alright idea, but I didn't think that they did the processing that well on it. I thought it sounded a bit like yeah. And then the distorted bass came in, and do you know what I thought? It what it really reminded me of. What worlds by Paul oh, Robinson okay. it was very much that sort of style sort of very sort of distorted heavy sort of dance music style and I was like ooh this has suddenly taken an interesting turn and from then on I still didn't like the vocal processing that much but now that I like the rest of the song enough I think I can, <laughs> you can ignore it I can, I can be like I can listen to that and be like it's like the, the song with the annoying whiny vocals in the um, Fiddler. Fiddler album I can ignore the annoying whiny vocals a bit because I like the rest of the song I, speaking of annoying whiny vocals because I'm a man I love I love that track. I loved this bit. <laughs> I love this bit of the song. Me bing 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 bing. But then the second he goes, Cause I'm a man, woman. That's actually one of my favorite bits of it. Why and then he goes, that? I thought I thought the beginning of it, it's a little bit weak. It doesn't sort of catch me quick enough. But once it gets towards the bit, like it's one of those sort of things I'll have on in the background, it'll be like, oh, this is kind of nice. And then it will get to sort of the build up and have them, them because I'm a man, woman. Wasn't high enough. As it gets there, I'm just like, oh, it's this song. I love this song. My man. <laughs> My I, man. I, 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 really, I really like that song, especially the end bit with the because I'm a man. What I really like, interested me the first time I heard that yeah, 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 was yeah. that the bass line was like really fat. Mm. But because the synth, mm. I think it was a synth. I think it was a guitar. Whatever it was, was filling up the low frequencies. Mm. It was like the thinnest, mm. fattest bass line. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, this is I, know, I know what you mean though, I know what you mean. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was crazy, totally but I loved it. It was really funky. I, I loved that. I personally, there's a Haim remix of that song. Haim. Haim, Haim, Hagoogly. <laughs> However you want to say it. House. Uh, house, yeah. Basically, Stop. I think it sounded better. <laughs> Stop. Look into my eyes, not the badge. In the eyes, not the badge. You think it sounded better? I think it sounded better because of the female vocals. I disagree. Wait, which? The Haim. Oh. Was. Haim! Fuck, man, get it right. It was, Jeez, it was also, it was like, because like, you told me about that. You said you should check it out. And I listened to it. And I, I did like it. It had a more sort of dancey production to it. Yep. It was much less the sort of 80s soaked in reverb thing. Which, uh, which, you know, I think either one is good, but I think it, it had less going for it in the track than the Cause I'm a Man one. And the point with the big crescendo, Cause I'm a Man Woman, I don't think it was as good with the female vocals. Cause <laughs> Cause I'm a Man Woman. I'm a Man Woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. That's what it says. Wait, wait, wait. That's what it says. I've got something we can all agree on here. Yeah. Okay. I fucking love the album cover. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was the, the best. Album was out of the, so out of the good. albums we've gone through so far, me and James agreed this is the best. As album soon album as I saw this album cover, I was just like That's gonna be good. It's so beautiful. <laughs> okay. Look at the, it. the the artwork was done by a guy called Robert Beatty. And if you go on his website you can see he's done loads of album artwork for a bunch of different artists. And was it's he all the fucking guy awesome. that did the one before as well? Did he do Lonerism as well? Oh shit. Because I, I think the guy that did Lonerism also did Inner Speaker. 
but I'm not sure. Or maybe it was the guy Could that did been. Inner Speaker also did Currents and someone else did Lonerism. I saw he did like loads and loads of like... Lonerism was like a photo. If you go on like the website, he does he does loads of different like Currents, like Esque different stuff. versions of it. It's uh, so cool though. Like, yeah, I fucking love wicked. that. I'm looking at it right now, it's awesome. Also, yeah. uh, the song Disciples, right? That like two minute belter. I love that. Disciples, disciples, right now. I'm happy just hearing him do that. Right now, disciples. Look at that's a happy guy for me. I am gonna describe this as the perfect accompaniment. Cheese. A Barbie advert. And you know what? I would love to listen to that advert again. When you were doing it that, was I was imagining so Mario good. walking down the street like Mario on like a good day. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's it's Barbie. She's driving in a like car. Is know? she like point your fingers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I, I loved it. It was amazing. And uh that kind of concludes all my thoughts because Disciples The ending of the really album I really dislike. I love the less I know better. Disciples, Let It Happen, The Moment, some of these songs are great. But one of the songs that was a lot different to a lot of these other ones that I really liked was Nangs. Yeah, I love that huge fucking symphony. I think Nangs is really cool. The it's only thing I disliked about it was that it was track two. And it was weird having an interlude after one track. I agree. But it was a nine minute first track. Yes. So it, it may have deserved an it's interlude. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. But I, I, I can definitely see that. But I think... It was one of those things where I went back and I was like thinking of all the Tame in Parlory tracks on there that were like, you know, The Less Is Better, you know, Let It Happen, Disciples, all these sort of things. And I was like trying to think of which one was my favourite. And I was clicking through. Favourite. He meant to say favourite there. I hit, I hit Nangs and I was just like, oh yeah, shit, I forgot this was here. This is cool as fuck. Like, it just, it just doesn't seem to fit in. Like, if, if it does fit in because it has the sort of same sort of reverby style, but it's so different that I was just like, I yeah. like it. I like that this I like it. And, and when Moments comes in after it, it yeah. works so well. It does it. work very well. I think I'd so. also like to point out that when I listened to that, mm. I was like, you can tell that's Kevin Parker playing the drums. <laughs> because he's not amazing, but he knows how to make it interesting by keeping it simple. And when you listen back and you just listen only to the drums, you're like, it was, it was you can like definitely some, tell. It was like some reverb soaked like 80s chilled dubs up, and I liked it a lot. Okay, let's stop here. Let's. Out of ten. Gareth Greg. Nine. Fuck. Fuck. Carry on. I'm torn between an eight and a nine. Okay. I think I'm gonna give it a nine. Oh shit, shit. I'm it... feeling the nine today. I like that. I like a strong nine. I think I think That's a weak I, nine, I feel I feel okay. you're sincere with your your ratings. I'm gonna give it a strong eight. Fair enough. I. Well, are we gonna are we gonna discuss lonerism? And no. How we will re- rate that? No, because it's like, have you looked at the time? I think we've wrapped it up quite nicely. I, I think I think maybe I should listen to the old albums and, and then, and then come we'll back. all talk we'll about up. all of the albums together and how we would rate. Them. <laughs> From That's the things, I'm say. From the things I'm I, say. and I think it'll be interesting because from the things I've heard, I think I'll probably prefer currents. Okay, fair enough. Mm. Well, uh, thanks for listening to the Sonic Squeeze. I'm Kit Campbell. Your Gareth Greg. Your James Kavanagh. And we've been talking about currents by Tame Impala. Have a great night, guys. Oh, we still. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally good. I don't know how to use this.